Yeah, I'm out here in the Cedarburg area shooting some astrophotography, um, something I love doing. And this is a really cool little arch that I found now and I'm going to be setting up my shots. And I wanted to chat to you today a little bit about the importance of scouting in the day and planning your shots for uh, nighttime shooting. So what's really important when shooting astrophotography, head out in the day, take photo pools with you or planet or any app that allows you to see the orientation of the Milky Way and where it will be sitting and use that to scout your compositions. Also look at what time of the night the shots will be possible. So have a look, will the Milky Way be above the arch? At what time will it be coming through the center of the arch? Where is my South Pole? Um, on this image, it's off to your left and I have the center up there. So this will also help you to plan what focal lengths you're gonna use. Are you gonna shoot in tighter to just have the, the center of the archway with the Milky Way shining through? Or are you gonna shoot ultra wide and have the South Pole making a nice star trail or a time lapse of the Milky Way setting from above um, the arch down through into the center. So planning these type of shots are really important. Also looking at your foreground, um, important aspects in the day when scouting, number one, does the formation, whether it's a windmill, a tree, a rock arch, does it break the horizon? That's very important for astrophotography. We wanna make sure that our important focal point breaks the horizon because when we're shooting in the dark, anything that's below the horizon is kind of lost in the foreground and we need to do um, some blended shots or some super long exposures for the foreground to try and see more detail there. So having your focal point break the horizon, really important to make your image stand out. And in this um, arch behind me, you can see that you can see the sky through the middle of the arch. That's important that the whole arch is breaking the horizon. So that's first thing to look for in the day. Second thing, look for foreground interest. Are there nice colors, textures in the rock? Are there some nice little trees or bushes around the front um, or branches that you wanna incorporate? And if they are, you might then, instead of doing a silhouetted image, a single image, you might want to then do a long exposure blend for the foreground. So shooting the foreground at four minutes or eight minutes at a low ISO that you can blend in and get all that texture and detail. And if you're not too sure how to do that, um, I have a video that I've recorded before on blending shots together, so you can go watch that and then you can see how to do that. So thinking about these things, so number one, does it break the horizon? Number two, um, is there foreground interest and do I need to shoot a second shot for blending? Very important. Next thing when scouting your location, is look at the moon. When does the moon rise? When does the moon set? Make sure that doesn't interfere. Look at the weather. At the moment it's cloudy, but the weather says this evening is going to open up. So crossing fingers, we'll get some nice photos and hopefully a nice time lapse here that I can share with you. The other thing when scouting, if you've got multiple cameras, um, is thinking about setting up another camera in a different location that you can run a time lapse at. This is the location I've chosen over here with the arch and I'm gonna run a time-lapse at this location and you can pull single frames out. So you can make that, that time-lapse video, I can get single frames and because I'm gonna hopefully have the South Pole in my photo as well, I'll be able to make a, a time-lapse, um, a three-hour time-lapse and get a beautiful circles all around um, um, the edge of the arch as well. So that's, that's something that you can also think about doing if you have a second camera when you're scouting, think about where you're gonna put the first camera and make sure that where you put that camera that's shooting the time-lapse is far enough away from you where you'll be shooting and maybe making light so that that light pollution doesn't interfere with your, your photos. Yeah, another important thing when planning these types of Milky Way shots is to know where the Milky Way will be at certain times of the year. So in the early season, the Milky Way is actually behind where I'm shooting now, and I would have to shoot in 180 degree opposite direction to what I'm shooting now. So that shot wouldn't really be possible for this arch structure because I can't stand on the other side of the arch, it kind of drops away. So knowing the time of year to go and shoot particular types of shots is very important in planning, and you can again use apps like Photopools and that to do that. Um, this time of the year, late season, which is October, um, in the Southern Hemisphere, the Milky Way is currently setting onto the horizon and will hopefully move very nicely um, into the gap between the arch. And that's the idea that I have for the shot. So also think about what your idea is for the end shot and then plan your composition in the daytime accordingly. 
and that will help you a lot when you come out 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night to come and shoot these shots that you've done all the planning you've done all the scouting you don't have to think in the dark and now try find a spot and use a headlamp to try find a composition which is really impossible and very difficult to do if you haven't scouted it in the daytime so daytime planning daytime scouting very very important for astrophotography.